What's up, Core Reporters, and a welcome back to my channel. That divorce between Jeezy and Jeannie is still ugly. You know, I thought that them sealing it, moving it away from the public would like kind of like calm down all the chatter. But according to Jeezy, Jeannie is a liar who has been briefing the press about what's been going on in their divorce against the wishes of the court. And she's been completely misrepresenting exactly what it is that's going on. Remember, this is all according to Jeezy. It doesn't mean that it is necessarily the truth. Right now with you, we're going to go over his response to Jeannie's last filing. So just to refresh your memory in case you forgot or you didn't hear about it, Jeannie filed with the court saying that Jeezy owes her a lot of money, about $90,000 in rent over four months. And um, apparently he also was supposed to pay tuition for their daughter, daughter Monaco, and he hadn't done that. And she wants her money. She said, Jeezy needs to run me my coins right damn now. And now Jeezy's clapping back saying, first of all, you're a liar. You are completely misrepresenting how much money you are allegedly spending. And second of all, this is supposed to be a sealed divorce case. How is it that the press has any inkling of what is going on between the two of us? Sorry, you guys, I got to go ahead and plug my phone before. Now, don't forget, you guys, I do cover this like anytime new information comes out. So if you have already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for wall-to-wall -wall updates on this messy divorce. Now, let's get into exactly what it is that Jeezy and his team fired back against Jeannie. Shout out to InTouchWeekly.com because they're the ones who got the scoop. So now, um, specifically, Jeannie says that um, Jeezy was supposed to put $500,000 into an account for Monaco, pay four months of rent, which was $92,000 title, uh, give her the title of two cars, a 2021 Range Rover and a 2022 Ford Bronco, and to pay $4,000 in tuition and childcare costs for Monaco. Now, Jeezy's saying it's, quote, disheartening that Jeannie would enumerate such blatant misrepresentations in her pleadings in an attempt to mislead and delude this honorable court. To me, the part where he says that Jeannie is attempting to mislead and delude the court, like that to me is just like, you know when you're like using polite corporate speak, but you're like speaking through your teeth because you're so angry and you think that the person is like, you know, doing some sort of BS. That is definitely what Jeezy and his lawyers are on. He is pissed, you guys. Truly, truly, truly pissed. And like I told you guys, he said that G Jeannie's been leaking this information to the press to make him look bad. And he's also saying, you know, let's talk about the, the rent that she claims that I owe her. She has provided four lease agreements, okay? I don't know which one of these is real, okay? There's no proof of her paying any amount of this money that she's claiming that I owe her. And until I get that, she's not going to be quote, reimburse, because how do I reimburse expenses that I don't know were actually like, you know, incurred. And so, oh, oh Lord, this is not good. Here's my thing, you guys. I feel like the messiest divorces are also are always the divorces that are taking place after these like quickie marriages. Jeannie and Jeezy were married for like a year and a half or something like that. And I can just already tell that this divorce is going to be twice as long as that damn marriage. <laughs> And, um, you know, speaking of uh, messiness, Jeezy says, you know what, I tried to call one of these like so-called landlords for Jeannie just to verify that the money is being paid and whatnot, that she actually is renting that place. And guess what? That number wasn't even in service. Can someone say scammer? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Jeezy is trying to paint the picture that Jeannie is scamming. Maybe she is renting something a lot cheaper, but she wants him to pay a lot more because listen, she is mad. She got blindsided by this man with the divorce and she really wants to drag him through the coals. And I cannot blame her for that, but she's being called out for it if she is in fact being untruthful. Um, so now Jeezy also says that when his team finally confirmed that there was a legitimate lease amongst all of the options that she sent, she then said that she wanted to go and find another home. And then he's also saying that Jeannie found another home and his team discovered that the one that she was claiming to rent is actually up for sale. So obviously she's not going to be living there that long. So he's saying there's something, you know, in the buttermilk that ain't clean about the way that Jeannie is living. And I really need a solid proof before I send over any money because this could be a scam. Direct quote from his lawyer says, it became readily apparent to Jenkins that all of the lease agreements provided by Jeannie were fraudulent. Fraudulent is a huge word. Like, like this, I'm telling you guys, this is ugly. 
let's continue with the quote. Based upon the foregoing, Jeezy is clearly of the belief that Jeannie is attempting to get reimbursed for a status quo housing allowance that she never has never incurred, never needed, and never paid. Jeannie has always wanted Jenkins to simply pay her $25,000 a month even though she has not paid any monthly rental payment for any month since she relocated from the former residence, marital residence in California. So where is she living now that she's not paying rent? Is she living there for free? Is she living with her family? Or is she paying a mortgage because she kept a house that she had owned prior? I do not know, you guys. I really, really do not know. But all I can say is that his team is truly laying into her and trying to let the court know or have the court believe that she is just a very untruthful and bitter, uh, scorned ex. They're saying it's disheartening that uh, she would allege that Jeezy has not been complying with the settlement without fully disclosing that like his team has been responding to her emails and they have not been able to prove that she's been living in any of these places that she claims to be living in. Um, and now when we talk about the half a million dollars that Jeezy was supposed to put into an account for his daughter, which again, I'm still mind blown that he has this money. Like what Jeezy? I keep telling you guys, I only know like one song by him. And I keep wanting to say we fly high, but that's Jim Jones. I know my president is black. I'm pretty sure there's another, let me see. I'm going to open up his Spotify. Cause like, I don't want to like play in his face. You know, I know that like, cause I'm a night, I was born in 93. So I know, like, I, I remember the name well before Jeannie Mai and anything like that. I'm not saying he's famous off of her, but I'm just saying that like, for example, if someone told me, you know, the guy who sings the song tipsy like if someone told me that he had half a million dollars and like he had all this money i'd be like really like i only remember that one song i put on for my city okay i know that one too and i love it okay i know that so three songs i'm sure he's got other businesses which you know in which case good for him because this is really really impressive to me that he can set that money aside for his daughter so Jeannie claimed that he didn't open this, the account, and Jeezy says that he did open the interest-bearing account with $500 in it exactly, and he would have covered the child care expenses if Jeannie turned over the receipts. Now, when it comes to the cars, he says that he was waiting on the DMV to process paperwork for the Range Rover, and it's unfortunately taking longer than expected. Now, the Bronco, however, was ready for pickup, but Jeannie did not go and pick it up. His lawyer said exactly that Jeannie's behavior is wanton, reckless, misleading, and criminal. Woo! Criminal. Criminal. Listen, huge word, especially when you talk about your baby mama, right? And um, I just, but here's the thing. Jeannie technically called Jeezy criminal when she asked for him to be held in contempt of court. Being held in contempt of court can sometimes lead to you being arrested, you know, AKA criminalized. So I feel like that's why he's using such strong language when it comes to clapping back against Jeannie. Like, oh my goodness gracious. I'm telling you guys, this is just the beginning. I expect for Jeannie to go ahead and, you know, throw some more allegations out at him, perhaps prove some of these wrong if they are indeed wrong and for this to just continue to go on for quite a while you guys like the fact that he called her a full-blown criminal a liar a criminal want on reckless like wow you guys this is huge it truly truly is now don't forget when it comes to their daughter gz asked for joint legal and physical custody while i believe that genie on the other end wanted sole custody because she was saying that Jeezy could be somewhat dangerous. Like apparently he would walk around the home with like rifles or something like that. Like, so I think even that is something that is still about to, you know, continue to um, play out in the court. So stay tuned for that. Like, I, I really truly do not know what else to say. All I got to say is it's sad at the end of the day that there is a little baby trapped in the middle of this. Um, and I really do hope that the two of them are able to, you know, perhaps be, I don't want to say sentenced to, but perhaps be encouraged to have a mediator to help them in managing like their communication as co-parents, you know, because this type of animosity, these sorts of allegations and these sorts of like, you know, harsh language, like, I feel like they bleed over into their interactions regarding the child, right? Like, you know, like, and I feel like it would be better for them to have like a more peaceful sort of like, you know, ambiance for the sake of their daughter. And I really feel like, you know, sometimes the courts do step in when they see that things are a little bit like, you know, 
toxic um, or extremely toxic, like in this case, like I think they, they typically do step in and try to enforce for these parents to have like, you know, some kind of counseling, you know, like parents, something like that to help kind of ease the tensions a little bit and remind them that at the end of the day, they've got a daughter together and they need to do their best to be on somewhat, you know, good, good, um, good uh, on a good basis for their daughter so now um in regards to some of the allegations that genie had made against jeezy he said and i quote the allegations are not only false well uh, the allegations about him being like dangerous and having a temper and you know allegedly putting his hands on her he says that the allegations are not only false but also deeply disturbing especially coming from someone i loved this malicious attempt to tarnish my character and disrupt my family is ridiculous. It's disheartening to witness the manipulation and deceit at play. And this time my main concern is being an active father to our daughter, Lord, you guys. And to think that this divorce was finalized back in June. Here we are in September, pushing October, just getting started with round two. Let me know what you think, you guys. Good luck to you, Jeezy. Good luck to you, Jeannie. Again, remember, You've got a daughter at the end of the day, and you both really need to work harder at at finding a, a certain even, calm, peaceful ground between the two of you, because this is going to be a long road. She's still a baby. This is going to be a long road if you guys cannot get it together. Let me know what you think, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more pop culture gossip, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.